Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I am back at you with another viewer request video where I'm going to show you how you can build a fraud detection pipeline using Apache Flink. But this time instead of Java, I'm going to use PyFlink. And I'm also going to show you kind of some of the additional capabilities and logic that we can bring in by using Python instead of Java to define our pipelines. Uh, I personally much prefer Java over, or Python over Java. Um, so much prefer developing Flink pipelines in PyFlink. But I thought it was important, you know, show you how to use regular Flink um, so you understand kind of the underlying logic. But today we're gonna be going into a PyFlink file, showing you how to write a Flink file in Python. Um, if you want to then run that, we're gonna show you how to do that. But if you're so, you know, wondering, hey, how do I set up a local Flink environment? How do I get started with this locally? Check out my previous video on uh, Apache Flink. Um, so anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing we'll do, just create a new Python file. So we'll just call this PyFlink fraud detect dot pi. And then once we have our fraud detection file opened up, we're going to start like we start every single uh, task with all of our packages and requirements. So just remember that for pretty much all these, you're gonna just need to make sure you have them installed within your Python environment. Um, so wherever you have that, it's pretty obvious which ones you'll need to install. Most of them are just in included in the PyFlink package. Um, so first we have PyFlink data stream. So this allows us to use the Flink data stream within Python. Uh, then we have the functions. So just the way that Py our functions are run and organized within Flink. Uh, types for allowing different types of data, different types uh, within PyFlink as well. Value state descriptor. This will allow us to actually set the state um, and then also have a description of that state alongside of it. So you can think of it kind of as a more complex tag system. Then we're also going to bring in the Flink Kafka consumer and producer because as part of this, I'm just gonna mimic Flink is producing and consuming from a Kafka topic, uh, which is a pretty common use case. And then serialization, simple string schema so that we can use a simple string schema that comes alongside PyFlink. And then for our non-PyFlink packages, importing JSON as we typically do when interacting with data. So a lot of data in Flink and Kafka comes in JSON format, so being able to read that and, and transcribe it into other data formats is crucial. Then we have our date time, job lib, and this is just a collection of libraries for allowing us to execute system level jobs. And then NumPy, classic uh, way of interacting with arrays within Python, and we're using that here as well. So now that we have all of our packages set up, our uh, next thing we're gonna do is go start setting up the execution environment. So Setting up a stream execution environment in PyFlink is pretty similar to how you would do it with a regular Flink. You're just going to create this uh, stream execution environment, execute this get execution environment. So if there is an existing environment, you can use that or it will set one. And then for this purpose, just because I'm running some on a local machine, I'm gonna set the parallelism to one. So it's only gonna have one compute node. It's only gonna process one uh, unit individually. In pr practice, you'd probably wanna up the parallelism. That's the big advantage of Flink is being able to process this data in parallel on many different compute nodes. Um, so just something to call out there. And then we're going to define a Kafka source. So this is the source of data that we're going to be uh, pulling information from. So very simple here, just imagine this is going to be producing some data uh, that we want to monitor for fraud. Um, so not really important here, just want to show you, hey, this is what our source would look like. And then what we'll do is add this source into our Flink execution environment um, by using the add source method here. Then we're gonna load a pre-trained machine learning model. Um, so most of the times when you're doing fraud detection, you have some kind of model that you just want to enter your transaction state into um, to say, hey, does this look like a valid transaction? Does this look like something that isn't fraudulent or does it look fraudulent? Um, and so machine learning models are a great way of having that more complex, uh, you know, kind of decision logic baked into your scripts versus actually having all that logic contained there. And it also allows you to, you know, feed the results of those uh, every time you check for the fraud, if that's correct or not, feed that result back in the model so you can improve that model over time. So I wanted to kind of show this because it is a great way of showing, hey, how PyFlink can allow you to layer in more complex things like machine learning models um, and just give you more flexibility in how you process your data. Um, so here, class enhanced fraud detector, just with using the process function, so inheriting from that. So the process function is just a basically a way within Flink to define a function that will be run to process any data point that arises. And then below that, 
what we're going to do is op define a function to open and get just some basic information allowing the last transaction that was produced by our Kafka source. So you can see here, that's why we have this value state descriptor. It's going to tell us the last transaction and get all the different data types from that and add them in an array and then save them as, you know, so runtime, get context, saving that as the last transaction state um, so that we can then have that information available to be processed. So what this has the effect of doing is just allowing us to ingest that data. Uh, so very simple here, but very powerful. And then next, we're going to define our processing function. So here we have predefined process element where you have self. So this is just referring to the actual current context state, so our execution environment. We have the value we're going to process, and then we have the context, so all the information around uh, what's happening with, within uh, this function. Um, so it allows us to get the current function state, uh, get the current transaction, just basically you know, allow us to actually query this data and then save it within the Flink environment. So here we have the transaction, which we're going to load that value that we just got uh, from our value state descriptor. So the source data, so that one data point that we're checking for fraud. And then we're going to just load that into just a simple variable, so last transaction. And then we're going to have a check for if last transaction is not none. So just basically a simple check for is this a null value, is it not? If it's a null value, don't need to bother doing the rest of this logic. And then define is none. Again, JSON loads, last transaction, loading that um, from the JSON format. So it's just available as a regular string. And then we have extracting the features, so transaction and last transaction. So the current transaction is working on and the last transaction uh, that was executed from the database. And then we're going to apply that machine learning model, so model.predict uh, on that features. So here, prediction, model.predict, passing in the features into our machine learning model. In order, I'm going to show you a non-machine learning model way to do it, so you can kind of just have the logic here within the file. But here, what you're going to see is say, hey, if uh, the prediction equals one, so zero or one state, either it's zero, non-fraudulent, or one is fraudulent, then dump the information around the fraudulent uh, predict, uh, transaction into a JSON, so user ID, uh, injecting the transaction from the user ID, fraudulent equals true, and transaction, the current transaction that's being evaluated. And then here, at the end of that, we will set the self, so the current uh, execution state, setting the last transaction state to whatever we evaluated uh, this transaction be. So is it fraudulent, is it not? Overwriting that last transaction state with the uh, tr newest transaction that we just analyzed. And then you'll notice we have, so we have that extract features um, function here. So we actually need to define that as well. So here we're going to define extract features where here you're extracting the features both from the current and last transaction. Um, so this allows you to compare, you know, between current, last. Um, so you have the, you know, at least a comparison model uh, to compare your most recent transaction against to. And that's our processing function. So not too complicated there. In most fraud detection, you're just getting that information out, running it through a system, a series of checks, or you're pro sending it into that ML model as I just showed you there. So next, what we're also going to do is build an alerting class. So that's our logic, but we need an alert to you know, let us know if this, there's fraudulent information. A big advantage of Flink is it's in real time, so you can get alerts in real time and act on this in real time. So here, we're going to define a class, alert sync, uh, inheriting from the sync function. Um, so that's just a provided uh, Apache Flink function for defining a sync, which is just a place for data to be sent to. Um, and then we have invoke here, so invoking this alert sync is going to load the data around the sending alert. So if the alert's fraudulent, it's going to send an alert um, and add the values of this uh, fraudulent, so this JSON here, the user ID fraudulent transaction, um, and just load that up into this alert state. And then sending alert will actually send all that information contained within alert. So here we have send alert, so passing in the information from this JSON into this uh, send alert function, which is really just printing it out with some Jinja templating here to put in what I had for alert. Um, so really easy way just to bring in uh, some simple alerts that actually will tell you information around what went wrong. And then to implement that, we'll just need to add a Kafka sync. So here, Flink Kafka producer, so we have our consumer and our producer. So here, this Kafka sync is we're going to fraud alerts, and basically it's just going to use that same Kafka server to actually serve alerts to people that are uh, monitoring this or in charge of monitoring this, this fraud. And then the last things we need to do are just implying the enhanced fraud detection logic. 
So here, what we're going to do is implement, so for each transaction stream, so this is referencing that Kafka stream where the transaction are coming to, load each JSON from that user ID, pass it through that processor, so the enhanced fraud detector, all processing the elements, extracting those features, um, and then adding the sync to saying, hey, if it's fraudulent, then we're going to pass an alert into that sync function and then trigger that sync function as well. Um, and then finally, we're also going to just add this uh, second sync that is going to also send that data back into another into that same Kafka topic. So imagine this, after it's been processed, goes back in that to Kafka topic and then some database picks up the process data from that Kafka topic. And then to execute the pipeline, really simple, just environment execute and then define that pipeline. And this will be hosted there and I'm processing any data that is arriving from those uh, Kafka, uh, that Kafka topic. Now, if you want to also see, so in my last one, I'm gonna quickly, I'm gonna not spend as much time on this because I basically did the same thing in my previous video. But if you didn't want to use a machine learning model and actually wanted to have the processing logic within the uh, Flink script, what you could do is have this class fraud detector. And then here we're just, again, opening, getting that value of the last transaction. And then in this process element, we're making sure that, hey, uh, what's the time difference between this transaction and the last? If the time difference is less than a minute, probably a duplicate transaction or a fraudulent transaction. And then also, if the amount is greater than 1,000 in, in the last two transactions, then it's also likely fraudulent. So this is just an example of having some simpler, but just you know, in the script logic on detecting fraud. Um, but yeah, just wanted to kind of show you the options there while also showing your production use case and so I show this in the last one as well. Um, so I hope this was helpful for the one that want, uh, whoever asked for me in the comments for it. And uh, for anyone else that is interested in using PyFlink for uh, stream processing. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.